So the first topic we're going to go into is raising capital. Because once you have your idea and your dream and you want to get moving, this is the number one question everyone gives me. Where do I get money? How do I get started? How do I get moving? So in my experience, there are different stages of raising capital. Especially if this is your first business, you want to go slowly. The first step always should be your own savings. I know it sounds different. That's not really raising capital, but there's a point. You need to save for two reasons. The first is so that you also sacrifice for your business. If you really want something and you're ready to commit to it, you need to know how like, much you want it. If you're saving money because you want to start a business, you're sacrificing something in your life on a day-to-day -day way. Whether it's takeout or it's doing stuff on weekends or how often you do your hair, there's something you need to sacrifice so you can save that money for your business. And every time you save it, you recommit yourself to your business. It reminds you of how badly you want to start this business. The other reason is that you also have skin in the game. It means it shows that you've also sacrificed and you're ready to do something for the business. So when you now approach fundraising options, like if you're going to look to an investor, you're going to apply for something, even if you're going to a bank, they always want to know how much have you put in. Because it's not fair to ask someone to take a risk on you when you've not put in that same risk. So to save as much as you can, it's good to show others that I also sacrificed. I'm so committed to this business. I have already put in all that I can here. This is how much I've put in. It's also an easier way to start because you don't have a business, I always say, until you have your first customer, a paying customer who has paid for your product or service. Before someone has paid for what you're offering, it's just an idea. So once you have your own savings, you can start small. Don't wait till you have so much money to start on a huge scale and you buy so much inventory and you've never even sold one product. You want to first start small. Get a few things, sell one or two, then you're sure that you know what you're doing. You understand your product, you understand your customers, you understand your market. And that is what you can do from savings before you take any risks or involve anyone else. If you're starting with partners, all of you should contribute some savings and you start together in a small way first. You don't want to start with a huge amount of money and risk and debt and problems and people you're going to have to answer to. Once you've started with your savings and you have proof of concept, you've sold certain amounts of products. I've sold one or two. I've sold the service several times. I have this many paying customers. That's when you can now look for outside funding. So usually the slang term is to ask for friends, families and fools. Those are the people who are going to invest in you first because these are people who are not going to be so upset with you if you don't pay them back if the business doesn't succeed. Your friends and your family and some fools bambi, people who are just happy to lend money or to give you a chance. It's an improper term for people who are extra kind, but it's unlikely also. Friends and family are great because they know your character. So it's not so much about the business, it's that they trust you and they believe in you. So they are happy to take the risk on you. You can't just go up to people you don't know and ask for money. It's very difficult to be successful there, especially when your business is still small and you've just proved the concept and you need some capital to grow now. So it's good to approach your friends and family. But don't just say casually, I need a loan of this much. Be organized about it. Write it down and be formal. Because to lend money to someone, to invest in someone's business is not a casual thing. You need to show them how much you've saved, how much you've invested in the company how many products you've sold, how much research you've done. If you have a business plan, this is when you show them the business plan. It shows you're serious. It shows you're diligent. You're a trustworthy person who they can rely on. And then you show them how much you want to borrow from them and why. I need to borrow this much money from you because I'll invest in this, this, and this in my company. Whether you need equipment, you need to buy more stock, you need to order some things from abroad, what are you looking for the money for? And how you're going to spend it? And then how are you going to pay them back? Because most of the time people give you a loan. They're not just going to give you money for your business. They want to know when will I be paid back. So you can show them in your business plan. You give me this much money now, in three months I'll start paying you back. This much every month for the next six months until the debt is gone. So you have to show them that you're serious about it. The only other way people invest in your business is through shares. Which is very hard when your business is still very small. Because your business is not yet worth a lot. So if you give away shares when your company is still small... They'll give you not so much money for a lot of the shares. That's why it's usually better to wait till it's later where you can say, I'll give you 10% for a bigger amount of money. So try and get a loan from someone who knows you personally and can give you that because they can vouch for you. Once you've moved past that stage and you've proved that your business can grow and that you have the consistency 
and discipline to pay back someone else's loan, you're now ready to take on more money because it shows you can manage the financials of the business. You're not using the company money for your personal things. You're reinvesting money in the company. You're paying back what you need to, and yet you're managing to meet all your day-to-day -day expenses. So at that stage, you're now ready to apply for grants, to apply for an incubator program or an accelerator program. There are a lot of these around now, whether it's online or at these different hubs in Uganda, like Innovation Village or Startup Hub or Outbox. There are so many different ones if you Google it. And you can apply for these programs and they will help you to learn how to take your business to the next level. They'll take you through the training of the paperwork, the financials, leadership skills, teamwork, different things in a formal way to formalize your business. This is the stage where you need to be making sure your company is registered. You have to start learning about taxes. You should have a bank account. And so things start to become regular and systematic. That shows that your business is growing. It's only after that, once you're sure that you're able to handle larger amounts of money that are going through your company. It comes in, you invest it well, and the company grows. If you keep taking in money and your company is not making more money, you're not using the money well. You're using the money for consumption. You're using it on things that are daily expenses instead of investment, capital expenses. So you want to make sure your company is moving in the right direction before you even think of banks or of investors who you don't know of applying to investment programs where you have an angel investor because at that stage you need to know your company well and you need to know you're managing your financials. When you start to think about banks and loans, the paperwork and the process is much more extensive. So you really have to be confident in your business and you have to have all your things in line, like being registered as a legal company, like having your taxes in order and having your accounting systems working. So that's much later at a later stage, but it's also something worth looking at. And at that stage, you want to shop around. Don't just go to one bank because you have a friend who works there. You need to look at all the different banks available to you. What are the loan products that they have? Are they products for small businesses? Is it something special for women-owned businesses? What rates can you get? What can you negotiate on? What kind of collateral will they need? Because banks generally need you to give something to mitigate the risk, which means you have to show what you'll give them if you fail to pay. So this is a later stage when you're sure that you need that loan to invest in something for the company. Capital expenditure is usually stuff like equipment where you need to invest a big amount of money to buy like a machine and that's what's going to increase how you're able to make your sales and revenue. There's also working capital loans where that's for things like inventory and stock where you need to borrow money to buy stock so that you can sell the stock and turn it around. So there's different types of loans and once you're at that stage, you have to spend time to do the research to make sure you really understand all the papers you're signing and what you're filling in because now this is a legal agreement. It's a formal thing. It's not like an informal loan between you and your friends and family. Raising capital can be very scary and it's a big area, but you need to feel confident in it so you should research and understand what are the different options. And don't be discouraged if someone says no. It's very difficult to raise money. Every company in the world is always looking to raise money. So there's, it's something we all deal with as business owners, as founders, big companies, small companies. We're either negotiating with the banks or we're dealing with an NGO that's given us a grant and they want accountability or we're using crowdfunding platforms like Kiva or Indiegogo or GoFundMe to get the money or we're reporting back to our friends and family. Oh, by the way, this month we sold this. Oh, by the way, your money has helped us to do this. Oh, see an update. So there's no such thing as free money. All money has strings attached. So you also have to go in with the mindset that I am in fundraising mode right now and this is something I have to do. Remove your pride and your shame because it can be scary and it's hard to take the rejection, but you need to be strong and you need to approach different people. Like how you'd look at different banks, if you want investment from friends and family, make a list of like 10 people you can ask. Not just put all your eggs in one basket. I'm going to ask this uncle. If he says no, it's all over. Sit and really think about it. Do you have an old boss, a mentor, a colleague, a relative, someone who you can say, let me talk to you about my business and they'll take you seriously and you can show them what you're able to do. Then take it seriously and don't let people down. Because if you're indisciplined about money at an early stage, it's going to be very difficult for you to grow your company to a bigger stage where you can take on more money. It's a hard mindset to have, but everyone does it. I've been through this with Mosana Carts. I've been through it with the different businesses, through my family businesses. So I see at different levels, everyone is always fundraising. A lot of companies, like startups, once you get to a certain size, 
one of the founders is full-time raising money. As soon as you get money, the operations team starts using it. You have to start focusing where is the next money coming from because you want to keep growing. So as an entrepreneur, you always have to be looking at your financials. It's great that you're making profit, but your profit has to go back into the company to grow. And sometimes it's not enough, fast enough to take you to the next level. So make a financial plan. This is where projections and a business plan comes in handy. And then be resilient in your mindset. Be determined in what you want to do and commit. If you can show you use your savings, it shows how much you want this how much you invested and that should give encouragement to anyone you're asking for investment and should also motivate you and show you how much you want it and help you to write grant applications or to ask people for money even after others have said no you have to keep going because it's an ongoing process it's not something you do once and say okay i fundraised it's over just mentally prepare for that it's something people don't always say when they're talking about business a business has to keep growing and it needs to keep having money invested in it. So even as you started your business, I'm sure you want to take out some money for yourself, your own salary, your own profits. So you have to plan for all these things because you don't want to be caught offside when your business has a big opportunity. Like Mosana is called to come for a music festival. And now how are we going to buy flour that is going to feed all these many people? We don't have working capital. You have to think these things through. If you're always taking the profit out, you won't have big chunks of money when you need it. So plan these kinds of things and know that you have to manage your financials and constantly be raising money. Raising capital is part of being an entrepreneur. So it's a key step and a cornerstone of what you need to understand in being a successful entrepreneur.